Hi there, True Surge. This is a heathen from across the Atlantic. Greetings to a fellow soldier in the trenches fighting the just war against the forces of darkness. Wait a minute. Are you the guy that ends his videos with astounding rubbish? <laughs> oh, wait. Not yes, that yours is. It is true. <laughs> it is history. It's just more astounding rubbish. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the ending is so sane. the ending is so nice uh, because uh, I look forward to that actually when I watch your videos. Uh, anyway, for my subscribers who uh, I I plan to upload our little chit chat today to uh, to my channel, I'm talking to Mr. Ken Humphreys. He has created. He's the mastermind behind the website JesusNeverExisted.com, the website that made baby Jesus cry more than once, and. <laughs> He's been putting up uh, some videos. I thought I would do this because I, I don't know how many of my subscribers have seen his website or is, or knew that he had a YouTube channel. So uh, I wanted to do this little chit chat and a sort of shout out to, to... Well, let me endorse that as well. I know you have a massive number of subscribers, True Surge, and I have a few. And I'd like them to be aware of your site as well as your subscribers being aware of my site because we are actually allies in a just cause that's a good idea yes of course you do tackle things that i haven't got around to looking at you've done a lot of great stuff that i've enjoyed and learned stuff from and just maybe some of the stuff i've tackled a new angle for you and for your subscribers oh thank you very much i i used your website a little bit in fact to create some of the material in my excavating the empty tomb series so i i definitely availed myself of some of the stuff on your website yeah and a very good series that was that you did excavating the empty tomb very good series oh thank you very much uh that was uh that you know i had done a series before that uh called jesus hebrew human or mythical messiah where it was a more you know it wasn't as produced it was just me standing in front of a camera saying things that i believed and things that i had discovered and it was not so polished but then when i did the excavating the empty tomb i i decided well let me make this one a little more polished and and do some things that i felt were a little off the beaten path not so overdone like the you know the con yep. contradictions like well matthew contradicts mark well everybody's heard those so yeah, exactly uh, exactly part of my own philosophy as well i don't want to just reiterate what people get elsewhere you know that, there's no mileage in that Christian websites are very good at just cutting and pasting the same old rubbish from one site to another a thousand times over. But let's give a bit more respect to the audience. People don't want to be told what you can find anywhere. They want to find more interesting stuff that joins a few of the dots that are left in obscurity. And I think that's where the product makes sense. I totally agree. And that, that was kind of my, my thing for my, you know, for my uh, series. I was like, you know, I've got to make this, I can't, you know, I don't want to go into speculation mode too far. You know, I want to still have it grounded in facts, but I want to cover some things that I thought were new. To, you know, if they're new to me, then maybe they're new to somebody else because I've, you know, I've seen a, a good bit of stuff now. So I thought, well, you know, the Homer stuff, that was interesting. And, and, uh, just a lot of the little tidbits that, that you had on your side about the, the difference between Christian and Christian, you know, that, that little bit and, and stuff, the tombs, you know, the, the, the various tombs of Jesus, things like that. But let oh, me, let me. Uh, yeah, yeah, and all of them empty. <laughs> yes, they're all empty. I mean, he must have risen from all of them. I mean, that's the implication. So let me ask yeah. you, let me ask you this question. You told me you were a. Uh, what was it, proofreading a, a, a new book that covers some information about the Jesus myth idea from various scholars around the world. What's that about? Yeah, yeah. Now, this, this is interesting, and it's an observation also to make. Since I began for, uh, about 15 years ago, you probably began before that. I don't know quite when. I began looking at Jesus seriously 15 years ago. Now, in those days... One of the rather dull, repetitive comments I got from Christians was, 
Nobody believes what you're saying. This is silly stuff. Everybody knows Jesus existed. Stop making yourself a fool. Everyone's laughing at you. That was the comments. Now, the interesting thing is there are now people saying in no uncertain terms, Jesus never existed. And people are saying that in every country across the world. There is now quite quite an assembly of scholars who are lining up to actually dare to say the emperor has no clothes. Now, there's proof of this coming out in terms of a book. Now, the book actually been written by a Greek scholar, Minas Papan Georgiou, and he has interviewed all the leading lights in mythicism across the world, though those that he's been able to contact and get in touch with. They include people like Robert Price, L. Doherty, Richard Carrier, and on and on. In actual fact, 20 scholars who would be considered mythicists or people who have seriously doubted the official story. And so now we have a compendium of scholars of great knowledge and erudition who are lining up to denounce this dangerous and destructive myth of Christianity. Now, I think that's an excellent thing. How I've got involved with this, firstly, I've been honoured by being one of the scholars, one of the 20 or so scholars interviewed for this book, but also I've helped him proofreading the English translation of the book because, as I say, it was, it's written by a Greek scholar. And um, hopefully it'll be published in the English-speaking world sometime soon. And... People will no longer be able to make those cheap comments. Nobody says this, and there's no scholars who agree with this. Right. Because there are hundreds of people now who say it, and, and there are dozens of well-qualified scholars who say it. So that's what I've been doing. Right. I've heard that, I've heard that a lot. Even, even by you know, a few atheists, they'll say, well, no serious scholar accepts the Jesus myth theory. Uh, and, you know, you hear that very often, and, and it seems like now this theory is gaining some legitimacy, not just here and there in the lay community, but but even with scholars who have uh, got some sort of, you know, fancy letters after their name and have studied the materials. And then they've come across this theory and actually put some time into it, and they've finally uh, come over to you know, to the dark side. And they've said, you know what? This has some legitimacy. Let's check it out. And they finally see that there's actually more under the hood than people originally believe. Yes, yes, this is true. Accredited scholars, as it's so-called said, that's people who've got a job in some teaching institution, are beginning to put their head above the parapet and dare risk saying the unthinkable. And the more people who do it, the more credibility this this will gain. And it is gaining. And for me, and I'm sure you would agree with me, I think the real genius come out the bottle when the internet made this possible. This is this is the death knell to organised religion, I believe. Just like the printing press triggered off the Reformation and broke the monopoly of the Catholic Church, the internet will break what I've got a straight jacket of Christian belief that grips people's minds because knowledge now is flowing very rapidly around the world and those those old cheap tricks like saying, oh, that's a silly idea, no one believes it, they can no longer get away with that. I totally agree. I've, I've often thought of the internet as a sort of modern-day printing press. It was, it was uh, sort of like Pandora's box, you know. It was just like it was... Once it was, <laughs> once we connected everybody to everybody, uh, it was just over. You know, it's like, like you say, uh, if I post a video, the world can see it in the next few minutes. Absolutely. And the parallels are very interesting because, of course, when the printing press was invented, as I'm sure you know, among the first things printed were the Bible and papal bulls. The official propaganda went out, first of all, and the popes and the, and the clergy thought, oh, well, this is pretty good, isn't it? They didn't realise what they had on their hands. And we've seen exactly the same thing with the internet, because who jumped on the internet first? After the pornographers, it was the purveyors of Jesus. And we had thousands of Christian sites all regurgitating their holy texts and 
dishing out their apologetic propaganda. And yet, OK, they've done that. We've seen it. It's boring. It's repetitive. It's unconvincing. And now we have the more informed, fact-based information being disseminated, being discussed. And yeah, they, they will rue the day when the Internet ever arrived. Yeah, it is. It is kind of ironic. It's I don't know. It it seems, you know, you would think that, well, they, you know, they have the numbers. And if they have the truth, then there'd be no way they could ever lose ground. But the problem is, even though they have the numbers, they don't have the truth. And, and people are slowly starting to see that, wait a minute, there are chinks in the armor. There are cracks in the facade. And wait a minute, this is like the matrix, man. This something's not right here. And they finally, a few of them, you know, are finally able to get out and see it, see it for what it really is. And uh, it's pretty amazing. And, and it's, it's very, you know, when I think about it, it does give me this small sense of hope, you know. Oh, I've got a tremendous optimism. You know, I, you know, I really do believe that we're going to win this battle. I mean, Moses and the patriarchs have gone down the tubes in the last 30 years. You know, Jesus isn't far behind. I'm full of hope on this one. I, I think we will win on this. This, uh, this crazy theory that we, we both think is true, it's going to take a little more time for that to gain ground, right? Well, it will, and certainly in certain areas of the USA, it's, it's, it would be an uphill struggle. I mean, people have got to give up a cherished notion. I understand that religion appeals to certain deep-seated psychological and emotional needs in people. I'm aware that organised religion is a sort of home for the lost and lonely, the waifs and strays, the reformed you know, criminals and drug addicts. They all find a, a comfort zone within Jesus. So they will be the last people to give up this anodyne, soothing indoctrination. They will be the last to, to, to move. But more rational people who don't have such a need to see them through the day the Anglican Church within the UK, it's a very liberal church. I mean, there's very little of traditional Christianity that it really, really still endorses. And, and I, I, from time to time, I meet Christians who don't even believe in that the, the Jesus is the Son of God. They don't believe in the virgin birth. They, they just think he was a nice <clears throat> man. That's all their Christianity amounts to. Yes, I'm, I'm not imagining that this will disappear even in the next 100 years, but I think the vast bulk of intelligent people will, will realise that Jesus is just another West Asian fantasy of a god that we inherited from the ancient world. And it, it's, it's, he's overstayed his welcome. He's, he's past his sell-by date. <laughs> I think you're right. I, I totally agree. So, well, I know you're busy and, and you've got, you know, billions of things you're working on. And um, so I didn't want to keep you very long. I just wanted to, you know, do a real quick chat and more of a kind of a shout out to my subs. And if you want to, you know, you know, you've got a lot of subs on your YouTube channel now. So if you want to put this on your channel, you know, shout me out. That's cool. But I, I was just I was just wanting to do a, a shout out. To I'll my subs. do that with pleasure. I'll do that with pleasure. So you let know? me let me uh, plug your plug your uh, website again and your your channel so people know what it is. It's Jesus Never Existed dot com. And it's just all spelled out lowercase, JesusNeverExisted.com. His YouTube channel is Jesus Never Existed, but leave off the, the last E and you'll get there. Jesus Never Existed. And that's his YouTube channel. He's got uh, a lot of vids up now. Uh, very interesting stuff. Go check it out. I, I like the ending particularly. <laughs> like I, I just keep, you know, I just keep wanting to hear that ending on every video. When he didn't do the ending, I was, you know, I was depressed, man. It like my whole day. Yeah, was... I occasionally drop it off because yeah. I don't want to be too predictable, right? <laughs> right. You got to, you know, mix it up a little bit. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. well, it's always a pleasure and, to and talk to you. just finish by saying this because there's an important point there, mm -hmm. right? From time to time, people make comments on my sarcastic humor. And I, let me say this. You have to have a sense of humour because the crimes of Christianity over two millennia are simply so atrocious, they would make you weep if you couldn't laugh. And so I introduce an element of humour just to lighten the tone so we can get through this stuff. I'm t in total agreement that the people who will watch your videos and get offended, I mean, I think a lot of those people have never even 
read about the history of the church. I try not to be, you know, overly, you know, angry. I try not to seem like an one of those angry atheists. Sure, sure. Uh, but I do have a sense of humor, and I, I know you do too. So it it's going to creep in there here and there. And I think that's, I just think that's a good thing. It just, it, I don't know, it, it just lifts that dreadfulness up a little bit. Just, just a tad. Yeah, just a tad. Right? And I know, I know that most Christians, most Christians I've ever met, are, are really nice people. The sad thing is, they think Christianity is nice and Jesus was nice, right. and unfortunately, they don't go and look at the truth. Yeah, that's 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 what I find. I, I mean, there's a few Christians uh, who we won't plug in this little chat <laughs> that we talked about. <laughs> the you, I think you've debated a few of those. Uh, they're just. I don't know. They're never going to consider what you have to say. You can't reason with the unreasonable. No, no. People have sometimes said to me, they may have said it to you, but you're a bit, you're, I think sometimes you're, you're, you're a bit more gentle and certainly less sarcastic than I can be. But people have said to me, why don't you tone it down? You alienate Christians immediately. And I reply to them, look, I don't write for Christians. There's no way I, I, I could ever put it soft enough for Christians. I, I write for the people who are having doubts already or to inform people who are already sceptical so that they are fully armed to deal with these people who are out to lunch with Jesus. Right, right. I think that's all you can do, isn't it? Just to, to, to do it from your perspective and do it your way and... You know, try not to overstate the case, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, sure. and and if you do that, then at least, you know, when these people come by, oh, well, you can say, I mean, I presented the facts and, and that's that's what I do on my videos. When I when I have somebody that comes in and in, 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 they're saying I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm going show me in my videos where I've made an error and I will and I will fix it and annotate it. Absolute. Absolutely. And, and complete silence. Yeah, complete yeah, silence. Yeah. It almost never happens that they correct mistakes of fact. They can't do that. No. They will often say, "You're all wrong." You know, <laughs> everything yeah. you said is all wrong. Right. And, and then they run away again. I know it, it's just amazing. So I, I that's that's my you know mode of operation is when they start doing that, I say, "Show me, point out where in my videos I've made a mistake or a factual error, and I'll be glad to fix it and annotate it." And it's like, man, that shuts them up real quick. Well, yeah, anyway, absolutely. it's been a blast uh, talking to you as always. Um, absolutely. To my subs, check out his website, his videos. And to you, Mr. Humphreys, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Uh, always a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You take care and we'll speak again soon. All right. Have a great day. Okay, so we're off the air. Fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs>